Hi everyone, um, I'm Anna, and um, yeah, I work at um, Future of Life Institute. We're a nonprofit that works on mitigating risk from emerging technologies, particularly uh, advanced artificial intelligence. And we do a lot of policy work, policy advocacy, both in Europe and the US and with the UN around various issues that touch AI. And um, I'm here to talk about the Windfall Trust, which is one of our latest projects that I'm working closely with uh, Anthony Aguirre on, who couldn't make it today. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the context in which this project exists. Now, before I can dive too deep into what the Windfall Trust uh, idea is, I need to go one step back and talk about the Windfall Clause. Uh, and the Windfall Clause um, was an idea proposed by FHI. Uh, it was a policy lever um, yeah, that came out of um, their report uh, a few years ago. Um, and it was to address the economic impacts of transformative AI and um, yeah, how to ensure that the proceeds of kind of like runaway AI would benefit everyone and wouldn't be captured in one place. But at its core, it was just convincing AI developers to pre-commit to sharing the profits of AI if they reach a certain threshold, a certain windfall of profit. And they define um, windfall as something as absurd as like 1% of total global GDP, something that today seems kind of like laughable. But that's the whole point. <laughs> it makes it um, more likely that um, people would actually sign it. Um, <laughs> and I mean, it's, it's, it's unlikely to happen, but it could, right? And even if we don't get there, I think a lot of this work is still very valuable in uh, how we think about wealth distribution, even just like without transformative AI, like the uh, impacts of automation and so forth. So the windfall clause would still need a target, an entity to receive um, a donation, like so let's say we reach windfall profits, where does this money go? You can't, we can't start by convincing AI firms to uh, sign this, sign their money away in this like legally binding contract without having a very thought out answer to what we would do with the money. Um, and this is just one proposal and we're open to having it criticized and it's, it's a challenging problem because if a charity would be on the receiving end of such uh, windfall, this would probably be the most uh, money any charity has ever had to manage in history. And that comes with uh, a lot of challenges. So that is uh, where um, we get into the Windfall Trust. So the Windfall Trust uh, is the mechanism we propose and are currently investigating to be on the receiving end of a windfall clause. Um, and basically, at the moment, I'm just saying trust broadly, but we're still investigating different legal structures this, this could take. But all the assets uh, the trust would hold would, by definition, belong to all of humanity. Anyone born would be entitled to shares in this, um, in this trust. And the shares would not be a sellable or transferable. The point is to kind of prevent more wealth accumulation, the rich buying the shares from the poor and so forth but rather having something where you have your shares, they're yours, it's kind of your, your right as a human on this earth, and you get a UBI through the form of dividends, and a potential ex expansion to this could be also the shares come with various voting rights, either in the trust governance or in possibly like, um, you know, we can explore um, voting on like um, funding different um, commons and so forth. Now, an important part of the proposal is also to start with the poorest people first, uh, and rather than doing a single major drop uh, to really, like, even if no windfall is achieved and just corporations are donating into this just out of social, so, social corporate responsibility, uh, as soon as you have enough money, you start the distribution and um, you create a steadily rising income floor. Um, the project, um, kind of has these three components, the legal governance and distribution layers, which I'll go through um, in depth in the next few slides and like the open questions we have there. But uh, the distribution layer at the moment is the area which has the most activity, the most projects. There's many people attempting various UBI schemes, projects with coins, there's infrastructure being built that could facilitate a lot of this, and that's all great. So we're mostly hoping to leverage existing work being done there, and we're gonna focus on the legal and um, governance uh, layers. And I think a common question is also, well, 
Isn't this just the same as taxation? Um, but it, there, there is a distinction because if you did have a single corporation like develop um, artificial intelligence that is just so competitive that it outcompetes everyone, um, that nation state would tax that corporation and then you have an all-powerful corporation and an all-powerful um, nation state. And even though the effects of this automation will be felt across political borders, uh, you know, it's not guaranteed that, uh, that those funds or that wealth would, would, would see, uh, see the light of day outside of that nation state. So that's also kind of why this kind of private solution. Uh, so, let, so let's go through some of the things we're thinking through. Um, and let's go through these uh, three layers. Uh, so first we have the legal layer. And at the moment, we're basically you know, funding legal research. We're talking to lawyers. We're trying to answer some of these um, uh, big picture questions. And it's, it's, a, it's a complicated undertaking. Uh, setting up like a, a, like a working windfall trust is a very like, novel experimentation with legal institutions. Um, so that's fun. <laughs> but we're asking ourselves, OK, what entity would it be? Would it be multiple entities? Because you, know, uh, you don't want a single government to just kind of co-opt it. You want to be resistant to infighting or corruption or people disagreeing on how money gets spent or decision-making power. So perhaps it's multiple entities and under what jurisdictions do they live and what are the restrictions of those kind of constraints of those jurisdictions that we have to consider. So there's a lot of questions there. We're also thinking through precedents um, and other questions like, you know, where are these assets actually held and who legally uh, controls them? And also thinking of different forms of capture, like I mentioned, and how to mitigate them. So the legal layer is mostly happening with legal research. The governance layer, um, it's, it's all about mechanism design. And here we're hoping to host more workshops, bring like people from different fields together, kind of host, yeah, uh, open, open discussion about um, how the governance of such a thing could be set up. But this also includes kind of questions about at which point do you start the payouts? How do you decide who to pay out first if you're trying to reach the poorest people first? Those are really hard questions. Um, and also things like, what happens when someone is born and dies? <laughs> how, do you, how do you factor that in? And who governs the windfall trust in practice? And how are, decision made? How, how are the decisions made? And is it democratically? And so forth. So yeah, the governance layer is, layer is also a lot of fun. <laughs> and lastly, uh, the distribution layer. And this is probably the part that most ties into the topic of, of uh, this whole workshop and uh, a lot of the projects I've heard about today. So there's a lot of kind of difficult questions here. For example, okay, how are you um, identifying uh, the payees and making sure there's no fraud, people aren't signing up twice? Um, and how do you do that without major privacy issues? And tied into that is if you are tying shares of this trust to people and you're doing this globally, how do you like ensure you're not accidentally creating a dangerous collection of global personal data than you're like trying to protect? Uh, so that's where kind of all this security crypt uh, cryptography comes in and like anything from the proof of personhood protocols to some of these, to, to a lot of these ideas that are being discussed today, like really um, uh, helps uh, with this project. Uh, but beyond that, there's also some, some slightly different rounds of questioning around how do you actually get this to people who don't have smartphones, who live in like rural places that don't have access to financial institutions. But we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. There have been whole teams of people like thinking about these problems for a while. So we're probably just hoping to partner with, um, with existing uh, projects for a prototype. Perfect, this is my last slide. Uh, so just to recap everything, um, what we're trying to do, at least um, at FLI, we're trying to create a prototype of a legal entity that can receive funds at a small scale and um, partner with a um, organization down the line that already has a pipeline that can get the money to people. Um, and yeah, prototype it. Meanwhile, finish the paper we started on like a lot of this mechanism design and 
yeah, seed the trust with initially some philanthropic donations just to see how it's working. And if things are working well, try to scale it and eventually, um, yeah, start talking to all of the um, AI developers about the windfall clause. And there's a lot of work happening on the windfall clause in parallel to all this right now. Um, so yeah, this is the windfall trust. Um, if you know of any papers, projects, people we should talk to, that is very welcome and very encouraged. And if you want to discuss any of these ideas, please, um, yeah, come talk to me. Thank you. Thanks. Have you guys talked to, there's a couple of like EA, like hedge funds that basically commit to doing this at a much lower threshold to their revenue and might be interesting yep. as like their type source. Yeah, I mean, we're very interested in Give Directly his model yeah. and research and all of their work they've done. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So do you see this in the same like approach? Yeah, I, I can see this kind of like tying into all of those efforts mm -hmm. and like helping fund them, like being mm -hmm. another like, source of funding for them, at least initially. Another one? Um, maybe you yeah. have Okay. Um, yeah, I was curious because the trusts are really flexible legal mechanisms. Like with uh, data trust, you can actually put rights into trusts. Assuming a world in which the windfall call clause is triggered, uh, that could be a vastly different world where we need new rights. Mm -hmm. Are you looking into maybe even like putting rights into the clause in addition to? Assets. Mm -hmm. uh, you mean the trust? Of course, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, the trust. Well, that's where I said like governance, uh, governments, mechanism, voting rights. So yes, we are kind of starting to think about it, but right now most of our brainstorming is around like, okay, how would you actually do this? But you're absolutely right that like, if you had the windfall trust today, uh, it might not be like the most accurate model for, you know, what would happen. Like you have to imagine like something like this also existing in a world where like there's less work. Uh, available. Mm -hmm. Like the intellectual property rights that the AI creates might not yeah, fall under yeah, that one yeah. percent. But, very good point. but like that, those IP rights yeah. should go into the trust as well, ostensibly. But then, it's, if it's a intelligently designed, it could you know keep expanding yeah. and include those those new needs as they arise. I think that's a very, really good point.